Okay, so, uh, in this lecture, we are going to revise a little bit of thermodynamics which you have already learned before and we will try to relate that to the engine strokes which we have seen uh, in our previous lectures. Okay. So, this is a sort of a revision you have complete you have done uh, quite a lot of what I am going to talk today. Uh, you have actually studied all these things, but I thought that it is uh, important that we sort of revise it. So, that we uh, sort of relate it to the context of the engines uh, which we are going to study. Now, the first thing which you have to uh, the first thing which you have to remember is that we are we are dealing here uh, in an IC engine we are dealing with an air fuel mixture. Okay. Now, if you want to analyze this if you want to analyze the uh, thermodynamic processes which take place in an engine uh, then we need to make a model that means we need to th there is a reality and then we need to make an abstraction of that reality so that we can analyze it to a reasonable extent and try to get some meaningful engineering calculations done so that at the end of the day every process we can analyze and then we can know the efficiency of that process how do you control that process what are the pros and cons of that process and then how do you implement that process eventually in a real time engine so uh, if you have to design an engine you require some abstraction and therefore we will we will resort to basic thermodynamic uh, thermodynamic processes because essentially an ic engine is a uh, let us say energy conversion device which converts the chemical energy of the fuel which is available. So, you have uh, you have essentially a fuel okay, and there is chemical energy inside and this this is converted actually to mechanical energy. with the help of the IC engine or with, with, with the help of an engine. Okay. So, we call this as an internal combustion engine because as we have seen the combustion process this is the combustion chamber. So, the combustion chamber, so the air fuel mixture is, is inside this. Okay. So, either it can be pre mixed that means, you have the fuel and the air already mixed and come in or you can have air here and then, then insert the fuel. So, air plus fuel is going inside either as a pre mixed mixture or you can have an arrangement by which you just compress the air and then put the fuel later on like uh, what is done in a diesel engine for example and then you can explode. So, explode this engine that means, you want to take the chemical energy out in the form of thermal energy. So, essentially you have thermal energy. Okay. So, from chemical to thermal and then this thermal energy is then converted to mechanical work. Okay. So, this happens in this combustion chamber for example, the, uh, once the enthalpy of combustion comes out uh, then uh, work is done because the pressure increases and it pushes the piston down and you can get positive work uh, here. Okay. So, in this manner the, the cycles can repeat themselves. So, essentially it is called as internal because this addition of heat is happening inside this closed combustion chamber. We can also think of an external combustion engine. For example, you can burn wood or you can burn coal, you can generate some steam okay, and then that, that steam actually runs the engine. So, in that case the enthalpy is actually brought out uh, is, is added outside the main engine. So, that means, if you have let us say uh, some, some steam or some compressed gas or something which is, uh, which is burnt outside this and then that enthalpy is brought in to run this piston, okay, this will be called as an external combustion engine, but in this course we are primarily dealing with an internal combustion engine that means, the, the addition of the enthalpy or bringing about the heat to run this particular system uh, like that is actually occurring inside the system itself. 
so that is why it is called as an internal combustion engine so essentially what does an engine do the engine converts the chemical energy brings out the thermal energy out of the chemical reaction which is that is the fuel gets oxidized uh, this fuel is a usually a hydrocarbon like a petrol or a diesel we will talk about it later the composition of these particular fuels so this fuel will burn and this fuel will burn in a controlled fashion how it will burn we will we will we will see uh, as we go along how, what are the dynamics of burning how do you control it and what happens uh, because of good burning or bad burning or in, improper burning or slow burning or fast burning all those dynamics will come into picture so it converts the energy chemical energy to thermal and then essentially what you have you as soon as you have a combustion your temperature here so if, if this is the ambient temperature let us say t ambient and this this temperature goes to certain value which is hot naturally because you have burnt a fuel air mixture in a closed chamber this temperature will become hot so this will be the starting point of your running of the engine so essentially what you are saying is that there is a t hot okay so this is the how much hot it can go we will we will see we have already studied the adiabatic flame temperature so we will talk about it as that what is the maximum temperature you can reach here okay and how do you reach that temperature whether you can reach that temperature in the reality or not uh, how much uh, to what extent you can reach that hot temperature we will talk about it but essentially we get a high thermal potential which becomes the source of the heat now this source is actually coming from the chemical energy of the fuel as i told you so this is the hot let us say source so this becomes your source okay and this source then delivers the heat to a thermal engine which produces net work w and then of course as you have as you all know we need to so some q in goes in okay and some q out goes out to the sink and usually for an ic engine running in a normal uh, condition let's say an atmosphere or uh, uh, in a normal automobile for example your t ambient essentially is the is the is the sink is the ultimate sink okay uh, so uh, you 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 all have studied uh, let's say basic thermodynamics and you know uh, that this is a typical block diagram of a thermal engine so thermal engine operates between two temperature limits one is a hot temperature which is the source temperature and one is the low temperature which is called which is called as the sink temperature okay so this is the sink and for all practical purposes the atmosphere is the sink and the 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 heat gets transported from the hot source to uh, via this engine so this is our engine via this engine okay the engine produces net work going through a thermodynamic cycle it's a it, it's a it's a complete thermodynamic cycle uh, as we have seen four stroke engines it will be having a suction stroke a compression stroke a power stroke and then an exhaust stroke so we will discuss the thermodynamics of what happens inside so that essentially happens inside this system so this becomes our system which we need to study in this particular course so the thermodynamics of this system okay so the thermodynamics of the system uh, of what happens inside this we will study the thermodynamics and we will also see some uh, effect of the transport phenomena that means how do these gases are in brought in how these gases are taken out the construction of this particular system uh, the system boundaries how do you control the system boundaries uh, to have the maximum efficiency uh, in terms of what we get out of here so what we put in what we put in is the heat in and what we get out is the w out and the efficiency will be defined as the ratio of the input to the output Uh, okay so uh, or the output to the input so you will get uh, 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 the the efficiency of this particular uh, engine and to increase the efficiency of that particular engine you need to understand the thermodynamic processes the flow processes and how this combustion takes place how do we control it and how does this fuel burn in a particular fashion so let us try to understand uh, two different types of uh, fuels okay so i have i have brought here two different fuels for example 
So, one fuel you see here is a match stick, this is a match stick okay? and the other fuel is a small uh, let us say Eastern stick which we typically use every day at home. Okay? So, now there are of course, these are some organic materials which will burn, which will oxidize in air. Okay? Now, the thing is that th there, is a, there is a distinction between these two fuels. So, what is the distinction? One of the distinction, of course, they both of them are solid fuels. As you can see, both of them are solid fuels. One of the distinctions between these two fuels is the rate at which energy is released. So, as you will, as you will realize that a matchstick is burns typically very fast. Okay? So, the a matchstick can burn very rapidly, but this particular Eastern stick will become very slow. So, let us let us burn it and see what happens. So, you can see very quickly the matchstick has burnt out. Okay? So, the heat addition was really very very fast. Now, if I burn if I burn this Eastern stick, okay, this will continue to burn for a very long time. It may take about uh, uh, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour for this to this particular uh, matchstick to completely burn out. Okay. So, what one distinction which we saw between these two types of fuels is that one is a very rapid burning fuel and one is a very slow burning fuel. So, there is a distinction between the two. So, now let us say if we have a liquid fuel. Okay. So, let us let us discuss the burning process itself. So, you have fuel which is typically a hydrocarbon in our in, in pra most practical cases. So, it will have some general formula C n H m there may be oxygen also in present there may be some nitrogen present. Okay. So, uh, there may be some other compounds also which are present which are uh, some silica may be present, some sulfur may be present, okay, some ash uh, un, uh, which, which something which cannot burn for example, some ceramic particles may be present. So, it is usually a mixture but typically it is a hydrocarbon. Okay. And then you want to do a combustion reaction. <coughs> you want to do a combustion reaction. So, what is a combustion reaction? You want to burn this fuel with the help of air that means, you need of course, oxygen. So, you, you want to burn you typically you want to take air because that is the most freely available thing you do you do not carry oxygen cylinders in an automobile. You typically breathe the air you suck this air and it has 23 percent oxygen. So, you want to use that. So, you want to essentially use the oxygen of which is present in the air and you want to make oxides. <coughs> and what will be the oxides? Since it is a hydrocarbon, you will typically have carbon dioxide plus H2O if everything burns away. You can also have intermediate compounds like carbon monoxide for example. If nitrogen is there, it can also burn and you can form different types of uh, let us say uh, 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 different types of nitrogen oxides. It may also have some sulfur. So, the sulfur can also burn and form some sulfur, uh, sulfur dioxide for example and numerous other small things can happen uh, uh, depending on what is the composition, what is the composition of this fuel. So, these are typically the oxides and once these, these are the exhaust gases so to say and this when it happens the energy of this is lower than the energy of this and therefore, you get some enthalpy which is available for you to do work. So, this becomes the starting point of the working of an IC engine in which you get this particular heat as uh, the, the starting point which you would like to convert to. So, this heat eventually you want to convert to some W net. Okay. How do you do that? that is what is that is what is happening inside the inside the combustion chamber. So, now as I was telling you there are two types of fuels. Okay. Some hydrocarbons okay, they can be fast burning that means, as soon as you ignite them they immediately explode and release all this heat very rap very rapidly okay. extremely rapidly they release the heat and they are called as fast burning fuels and some other type of hydrocarbons can be relatively slower. So, that is slow burning fuels. Okay. So, you can divide the hydrocarbons in majorly two parts okay. the typically what we use in a IC engine operation fast burning fuels and slow burning fuels. 
Now, in terms, so the heat release rate, the heat release rate in the fast burning fuel, like we saw in a matchstick, okay, is very rapid, okay, or relatively much more rapid than what it is compared to a slow burning fuel. So, a slow burning fuel will burn relatively slower than the fast burning fuel, and therefore, the combustion dynamics of these two, the way the heat is comes inside the combustion chamber is actually fundamentally different in this class of fuels than this class of fuels. And to complete, uh, to complete the story, this what we typically call as gasoline <coughs> or petrol can be typically characterized as fast burning fuel. Okay, and diesel, the diesel engines or the diesel fuels, the diesel fuels can be typically characterized as slow burning fuels. So, what is the implication of this rapid burning mechanism? Of course, it depends on the chemical kinetics of the system. So, that means this chemical kinetics, this combustion reaction is pretty fast. The chemical kinetics of petrol is faster than the rate of reaction, the rate of combustion reaction of gasoline is faster than or much faster than the rate of reaction of diesel fuel. And therefore, this rate, the time in which this energy is made available to the piston or inside the combustion chamber to do this work is essentially dependent on the, 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 the two types or two classes of fuels. So, in, the, in, in some of the lectures, in the next lectures or so, we will study what are the implications that when you do something very fast, what happens inside the combustion chamber and then when you do the same thing slower, that means the same energy is released or let us say equivalent energy is released, but the rate of energy release is slower, then what happens to the combustion chamber is what is interesting and that essentially defines or it, it bifurcates the topic into petrol engines and diesel engines and the thermodynamics of these two. Uh, many, many processes are similar. However, the combustion process is fundamentally different in a petrol engine as relative to the diesel engine and therefore, this needs to be understood in greater detail which we will take up in the next lectures. Thank you.